All right. Uh, welcome to the coffee break. Let's see. Okay. Welcome to the coffee break. Uh, this is the episode number 80, uh, 87. Uh, I think that's the second of the year. We had one two weeks back. One of my colleagues, uh, Peter Ross, was hosting. And uh, now I'm back from vacation. Uh, it was very fun. And I uh, hope you also had a good um, uh, winter break. And uh, as usual, this is a very open space. Any kind of topics or questions that you may have, uh, projects that you are working on. So yeah, please open your microphone um, and ask away anything interesting going on. Oh, hi, Chuck. I think we have, haven't seen you here before. How are you? You are on mute if you're talking. How are you? Doing well yourself? Haven't seen you in a while. Doing all right? Yeah, yeah, doing all right. Good. Yeah. So has there been any announcements on the next... Um, oh, what am I thinking? Uh, you've got one going on overseas. Uh, the um, um, dev, dev camp or whatever for the, in the U.S. All right. So there is a, a boot camp going on this week. So bootcamp is online. It's uh like a training online that happened mm -hmm. happens this week. Uh, today they are talking about I believe um, configurators, and tomorrow is the AC data model. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, right. so we do have a few events coming early this year, right? So let me show you here. So we have a sustainability accelerator in Boston happening on the uh, end of February and uh, that's Boston US uh, well the focus is really uh, so so we have people with that expertise there to help you now if you want to work with general APS also fine uh, we have uh, that that's we always have that right but if you want to work with sustainability that's a good place to go now we also have a former hackathon happening in Oslo uh, mid-February, like less than a month from now. Uh, so that is at the former office, uh, former, the, the office we have in Oslo, most of the former team is based there. So there's a hackathon. It's it's very much like a, 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 an accelerator, but um, in this case, they, they also have you no know, people doing you know, hacking projects. So that's also fun. Uh, oh, oh will be, I, I guess will be, very cold and snowy, so it would be fun as well. Now, I, I think what you are also asking is about DevCon, right? Yes. Okay, so DevCon, um, I know that right now we're still planning. It has not been announced yet, I believe, but the plan is around May, I believe, and uh, US and Europe, it's not fully decided, so don't don't take my word just yet. Uh, okay. But the plan is to have that in May. Um, and I believe, again, don't take my word for it, it may be in Boston, uh, but it's still to be decided, not been confirmed yet, right? Uh, but yes, yeah. we plan to do a DevCon this year. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, where, where are you based again? I think it's... Midwest, right? I keep forgetting. Is it is it easy to go to Boston? I'm sorry, what's that? Is it easy for you to go to Boston? Um. Yeah, I mean it's a long trip, but uh, but it's not uh, not you know I've done it before a few times, so okay, it's, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, this last year, 2023, was um. Uh, uh, San Francisco and, and Munich. So that's why we're still looking for this year. So let's see how where it goes. Yeah. Cool. Thank it's you. easy to, it's easier to go west, but no, I yeah. I don't have a problem going east. So it, it you know it is what it is, right? So mm -hmm. cool. All right. Um what else is going on with other others as well? Anything interesting? I probably have to send a reminder for the uh, the coffee break, right? Uh, new year, new uh, calendar. I have to block the time so we remember. I'll, I'll, I'll be sending that for next time. 
Oh, hi, Jonathan. Hey, how are you? You know? Hope you had a, a good new year. Yeah, you know, things are pretty rough here. Um, Okay. Right. Um so what else? Uh, uh I was mentioning about the boot camp, right? That is happening for the AC data model. That is happening this week. Uh you the, the AC data model is also in beta, public beta. So if you want to try it, the only uh, uh thing there is uh you need to allow list a hub to work with that, right? So if you want to work with the AC data model, be part of the beta so you can you can have access to the to a hub. with um with it with that uh engine enable right um yeah but it's it's going well so far mm -hmm. that's happening uh, tomorrow this uh, part of the boot camp right yes um, that's tomorrow and mm -hmm. and um apart from having a hub in the us uh, i'm is there anything else that needs to be prepared for for tomorrow um or just have the hub ready or join the the hub that was sent uh, by email uh either way right so either join the hub or have your your own hub with a cdr model enabled so you need to basically build uh, an app and then enable that uh, uh service no, just just the hub right so the hub just the hub yes ah okay So let so me. it's in the settings of the hub. Actually, you have to allow list that, right? So, uh, you need a hub uh, on the Americas region, and yeah. uh, uh, you need to join the beta so you can allow list that hub, right? So every time you upload a model to that hub, we are going to extract the data model from it, right? And uh, that ex that additional extraction, that processing for the AC data model. It's not happening for every everyone. It's just happening for those that are allow listed as of now. So you need to allow list your hub. I So see. this only works after the files are uploaded. After you, it's allow listed. So you have to allow list and then upload a few models there, or at least one model, right, to mm -hmm. be able to query against that model. I see. Okay. So it's not it's not super hard, right? But you ha you have to do it before the training, otherwise you, you lose some time during the training. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think Juan will be hosting the training in the Americas time. Uh, so he's very good at it. So he was uh, uh, working on, it, on a few of the samples, a few of the, some of the documentation review as well. So lots of good content there. And the the other region. Well. Eventually, of course, we're going to support the regions we support, but during this beta, it's just Americas. No, no, I, I mean the other region in terms of the training. Oh, who is going to deliver the train? Ah, uh, good question. Uh, let me find out. I don't remember exactly who's doing that, but I can find somewhere in here. I think it's Varun in, in India. Yes, Varun in India. So he's he'll be doing the training for the Europe time zone. So we usually have two time zones, yes. yep. Europe and, and Americas. Yes. So he'll be hosting for the Europe. Okay. Cool. Again, I, I, everyone is very uh, well versed with the API, so they can can really help you there. So yeah. Don't miss it. Cool. What else is going on? Any questions, projects, question, uh, questions that you have? Um, yeah, I actually have a question about the software itself, not so much the API, but uh, what, uh, what I'm needing to do is I'm needing to be added to every project. And of course, I don't create all the projects. So I'm looking to see whether or not there's a particular switch that can be turned on somewhere in ACC so that when a project is created by someone else, can I, you know, can I be notified that that, that, that happened? I don't know of one. I hadn't seen one. I just thought maybe there might be something I'm just missing. I haven't seen that kind of notification. 
I believe not because to create a project, you need to be in a, a, a hub admin, right? Mm -hmm. So in theory, whoever is creating that, or it, it, the one that is able to be notified about it, right? So I haven't seen a way to notify about new projects. If you want to do it yeah, through the API, right. you probably need a uh, two-legged to get all the hubs and see what have changed, right? But then you have to check you know, uh, frequently, pulling to right. see if there's, a, if there's a new project there. But so I haven't what seen I'm this. looking for is something uh, more on the administrative side, and that's that yeah. we want to be able to back up our projects to a local server uh, you know, each week. And of course, I can't see those projects if I'm not added to them. So, well, you it can, would be nice if there was a. Yeah, you can if you are the account admin, right? So, uh, yes, or if you're using two legged. So, if you're using two legged, you can you can get all the projects, and then you see all the projects that were that were added that 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 are part of the of the account. Huh. Okay. All right. So let me show I'll try you what that. I mean. I, uh, yeah. Quickly what's that? give us let, let, let me get this here. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. Um uh, get to the API documentation, account admin. Um yes. I was testing a software that actually did this. Yeah. And I wasn't able to see the projects if I couldn't, if I wasn't added. Uh, as a member to the project. So this and, yeah, I am here, admin, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So this endpoint here, uh, mm -hmm. you just pass the account ID that will give you all the projects, regardless of of whoever have have access to it, right? So you're just listing the okay. projects. Now you can um, you can pass a user ID to that request. So that will give you only the projects that that person have access has access on okay so if you don't provide the user id that will give you everything right right hmm. okay all right because you're not in uh, you're not using you're not impersonating anyone right you're just saying give me all the projects right uh so that's only possible with two legged because you are getting all the projects but then to, to actually list the files or do something else, then we, you may need a user permission for it, but here we are just listing the project. And I believe that you can um, filter by updated at, yeah. Yeah, so name, product, yeah. But that's update is just, um, yeah, so there is an update to the project itself, not to the data in the project. I believe this. Now, be you said that, that if I use two legged authentication, does that change if I need to use? How does that change if I need to use three legged? The reason I'm asking that is, is this will be a desktop application since I need to get the files written back to our local server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and challenge is that, that that takes three legged. Yeah, that's a two legged, right? So you have to be very careful about where you store the ID in secret. Um, so if, if it's a desktop application, you, you really want to have a, a server in the middle to host the ID in secret to avoid leaking that, right? Mm -hmm. But here, let's say you have this server in the middle that will get you all the projects. You just check by the date where it was created and uh, everything, everything that was created over the, sev over the last seven days, whatever, right? You know it's new or last day, you know it's new. And uh, you just return that to your desktop client saying, here are the projects that, that were created. And then your desktop application will do something on top of that. So the account ID or the hub ID that is listed here, right? This is not um, uh, 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 confidential, right? So that's uh, uh, somehow public. So if you just return the list of IDs, it, you're, not, you're not leaking information, right? Because whoever is calling that still need permission to do it. So this this server in the middle is just listing everything, so you you know what is there. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. So two legged okay. get projects that should give you what you were looking for. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, there are there are lots of applications that can do backup, right? Um, and um, they they vary a bit depending on what they do. They usually uh, check for what is new or latest, or user have hooks for that. Uh, the same here will be for projects, right? You have to check if the project was created recently. So you you can you you if you to decide if you want to backup it or not. Um, yeah, I was looking at Navigate, and uh, that works very well. Um, and so uh, you know, I was pretty happy with that. But uh, anyway, we're, we're looking at alternatives, whether or not we want to write that in-house or whether or not we just want to you know, mm -hmm. purchase something. So, All right, cool. Thank you. What else is going on? So there was a question a few days back about uh, wildcards uh, on on callback URL, right? So you may know that uh, we've added a feature to allow people to add multiple callbacks. Like, like you can have you know, staging, testing, different environments for your credentials. But then you can also use uh, wildcards, but there is a, a, a important point there, right? So if you check here, um, you can have that on the subdomain, but you cannot have that as part of the URL. So there was some questions around that. So if you wanna have as part of the URL, you should do something else. Is this is really just for a subdomain. Part of the URL is um, a security problem because of you no know, other features. And uh, there is also a, a callback state that can be used to do more control. Where is the state here, right? So you can pass the state, so the state will go in full circle and, and come back to you, right? So you can define, decide what is happening there. So the state is also interesting, uh, but this blog, blog post explains best practices around that. Uh, so it's interesting if you haven't uh, tried that. Uh, hey, Augusto. Hey, Luis. Uh, this works with uh, multiple parts. Multiple parts, parts, parts like parts. Uh, uh, using... it should it should as as long as you use the wildcard on the subdomain, not on the port number. Yeah, uh, actually, I need the port number because I'm using local host or something like that. So I yeah, at the so moment the... I'm I'm having I don't know ten uh, callbacks each one with one part. Yeah, so the white card cannot be used with local host, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is this part is really tricky, right? Because um, you want to be flexible, but you don't want to be too flexible because then it allows uh, um, applications to hijack somehow, right? So the other day I saw someone that created a uh, page to try to steal Google credentials, right? So they created a page just like Google, but with even with the same URL, right? So the URL was google.com.fake.com, uh, uh, right? So something like that, right? So it, it, it's it's it, you, you don't have you don't have to be too flexible because otherwise people just get confused and. Uh, Someone can reuse your credentials there. So there, are, I'm, I'm, I'm no expert here, uh, but I'm, um, I know that there was lots of discussions about uh, multiple callbacks and wildcard, and um, yeah. So they, I think that's the common ground that how, on how much you want to expose. Now for the port, uh, what you what you can try to do is to have the state to pass the port or the environment, right? So whenever you get the callback, you check on the state and decide, okay, now I'm going to port one A or B, uh, 80 or whatever, right? Um, so there are ways to do it. But uh, again, the wildcard is not for local hosts, it's just for domain. And it's just on the subdomain, not on the path. Yeah, uh, yeah. in my case, I'm using to authenticate my user in my desktop application. So... I'm using local host or 
forget the other one, but 20, I need to, to be yeah. local. Yeah. Just to make more uh, interactive I, mm -hmm. in this case, to open my local host page to sign so with. Why, why do you have multiple ports? Uh, because I need uh, sometimes, uh, I need to select one port actually. So to make it easy, uh, I'm uh, making the port random. So yeah, that that yeah, don't don't have a, a good good response, but yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, probably have to if if you re, if you need to have more ports, you can switch to have in day state and then you redirect to the port. So you have one server on. I don't know, 8080 to get the response call back and then redirect somewhere else to do the rest of the job for you with the state. But yeah. Anyway, wildcards cannot be used on a local host, so you are you have to find some, some other way then. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, it's working like uh, right now, but yeah, mm -hmm. it would be easier to add uh, only one local host with uh, any part, actually. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Okay. And if anything else, any other interesting projects going on? Um, yes. There's a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I've been uh, looking at the uh, Autodesk uh, replication tool. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's basically a tool uh, in beta to move projects from one hub to another or from docs to from BIM 360 to ACC. Okay. And um, uh, the issue is that the files are then uh, not work shared. And actually they need to be, it's a lot of manual work. If I want to move a whole project, is there a way with the uh, ACC to enable um, work sharing uh, uh, in the cloud. So if I have a model which is already in the cloud, um, is there a way to make it uh, like a work shared file? I don't know. I think not because that's something that Revit does as I recall, um, let's see. So it might be done through design automation. Yes, uh, I was thinking that is any any kind of specific command, but uh, no, there is just publish. Yeah, so you need to probably open that with design automation, but I'm not sure if design automation will allow you to start a work sharing. It would allow you to. Um, Access a work shared module, for sure, but not to. I'm, I'm not sure if it allows you to start well, a work sharing. It, it's part of the Revit API, so you should be theoretically you should be able to. Yes, yes, but uh, accessing work shared modules via design automation is a special condition, right? So you're right. It's just that those modules are unique on the way we start them. Now, yeah. once we start a work sharing, right? Revit, uh, Revit does not save a file anymore. It saves um, a breaking, broken down re uh, file, right? So how yeah. how would you save that back to the cloud? So that's the challenge. They're not to actually enable work sharing. Uh, so Jonathan, would you mind sending that to the uh, APS help alias? If sure. Not, I can I can I can I can I can send as well. But uh, if you send the, the request there. Someone will take a look. I'll ask um, uh, uh, Zong to, to review the ticket and also start investigating. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll write it up in a kind of concise way. I've just been just started looking at the art because uh, the replication tool. Because um, you know we want to enjoy the features of ACC, but we have projects that have been going for quite a few years now and they're on BIM 360. Yeah. And we now, another, another question, right? So yeah. yeah. Is the module uh 
work shared. So you are using the replication tool to go from uh, A to B, right? Is the model yeah. already shared on A before you move to B? So it's it's yeah. losing its okay. So maybe the replication tool can can be improved to do that for you, right? So if if the models work shared on A, it goes as work shared in B as well. So you don't have to redo uh, that. Currently, it doesn't, and and I think it's um, I I mean the the way the it's the way it's documented that it doesn't. It says that it saves uh, work sets and so on. Okay. But it's not shared. So yeah. kind of like detaching a model. Okay. All right. Makes sense. I, yeah. I'll, I'll open a ticket and, I'll, and, and we'll follow that. I'll send All an right. email. Good. Thank you. Thanks. That will help us investigate. Yep. Okay. Um, so we are almost on time. Um, just finishing up then. Um, so the next coffee break will be again, same time, same link, February 7. Um, and uh, I'll, uh, thank you very much for joining today and uh, see you soon on the 7th. Thank you guys, talk soon. Thank you, bye-bye.